Have you ever wanted to share your favorite rail game with the world, but didn't know how to get it online? Look no further, because in this video, I'll show you how to use the power of WebAssembly to easily convert your C or C++ Raylib game into a web-based application that can be played by anyone with a modern web browser. Let's get started! On my desktop, there is a folder called Snake, which contains the code for a simple Snake game that was developed using C++ and the Raylib library. If you'd like to use this code to follow along with the tutorial, you can find a link to it in the description of the video. If I run the code, you can see it is working fine locally. If I wanted to share this game with others online, I would normally have to share the executable file. This would allow others to download and play the game, but it will be still limited to just a few platforms. Another option would be to share the code for my game online, but this would require others to have C++ and Raylib installed on their own computers in order to run it. This will not be the most user-friendly option, as not everyone is comfortable with installing programming languages and libraries on their own. The best option will be to offer an online version of my game that can be played directly in a web browser. This way, anyone with a modern web browser can access and play my game without the need to install anything. And this is where WebAssembly comes in. Using WebAssembly, I can take my C++ game and convert it into a binary file that can be run in a web browser. This binary file will contain my C++ code compiled into a special format that is optimized for web. Once I have this binary file, I can load and run it in a web browser, just like I would with any other web-based application. This means that my C++ game can now be played by anyone with a modern web browser, including people using smartphones and tablets. No longer will my game be limited to just a few platforms. It can now be played by a wide range of users on a variety of devices. And because WebAssembly is designed to be fast and efficient, my game will run smoothly and quickly for all my users. Let's now convert this game into WebAssembly. It won't take us more than 10 minutes. It's not difficult if you know what you have to do. To convert a C++ Raylib game to WebAssembly, there are three main steps that need to be followed. First, we need to download and set up the mscripten development environment on our computer. This will allow us to compile our C++ code into WebAssembly modules. Second, we need to compile Raylib for the web using mscripten. This will involve configuring the build settings for Raylib and then using mscripten to compile the library to WebAssembly. Finally, we need to compile our game using mscripten. Once you have completed these steps, you should have a working WebAssembly version of your game that can be played in a web browser. Although I am showing you how to convert a C++ Raylib game to WebAssembly on a Windows computer, this process can be adjusted to work on other operating systems too. While there might be some differences in the commands and tools needed, the general steps are similar. The first step is to download and set up the mscripten compiler. mscripten is a set of development tools that enable us to compile C or C++ code into WebAssembly. Mscripten requires Python to be installed, so before we start the installation process, we have to download Python if it is not already installed on our machine. We have to go to python.org and select the Downloads button. Download the latest version and run the installer. When installing Python, don't forget to check the Add Python to Path checkbox. After a few seconds, the latest version of Python is installed and we can move on. To get started with installing mscripten, we need to visit the mscripten website. This website provides detailed instructions for downloading and installing the compiler on various operating systems. Since we are using Windows, we will go to the GitHub repository of the project here and download the zip file by clicking on the code icon here and then selecting the download zip option. After downloading, we need to unzip the file to a location on our computer. 
let's choose to unzip it to the C drive. Also, let's remove the dash main from the name of the folder to make our life easier later on. Now, let's open the EM SDK folder and right click inside the folder and select the Open in Terminal option. A new terminal window opens and now we have to enter some commands. The first one is this dot slash emsdk install latest. This command will install the latest version of the mscripten compiler toolchain using the mscripten sdk. This procedure can take up to 10 minutes depending on your internet speed. After the installation is complete, we have to execute the following command dot slash emsdk activate latest dash dash permanent. The activation command sets up the environment variables and configuration for the specified version of the SDK so that it can be used in your terminal or command prompt. The dash dash permanent flank tells mscripten to set the activation state permanently, meaning that it will persist across system reboots and new terminal sessions. This is useful if you plan to use mscripten frequently, as you won't have to activate the SDK every time you open a new terminal session. The installation is now complete, but don't close the terminal window yet. We are going to need some information from it. The first step of the conversion process is complete. Now, the second step is to compile Raylib for the web. To export the compile Raylib library for the web, we need to navigate to the source folder inside the Raylib installation folder. My installation is at the C drive, so we have to navigate to the source folder like this. Here we will create a new folder called web. This folder will contain the exported compiled Raylib library for web. Inside the source folder, we can find a make file. We need to open it with a text editor and make some changes to it. I will open it with Notepad++, but you can open it with any text editor you want. We need to modify this make file to compile the Raylib library for the web using the mscripten compiler we just set up. The first change we have to do is here. Instead of platform desktop, we need to change it to platform web. Next, we need to change line 56. We need to export the compiled file to the web folder we created. We add slash web here. Now we need to find where the path to mscripten is defined and change the paths defined here to match the paths on our computer. The emsdk path is correct. We don't change it. We have to change the python path and the node path. Remember I told you not to close the terminal window a few seconds ago. We need some info now. We have to go back and find the python path and the node path. All the information we need is here. This is the python path and this is the node path. We have to modify the paths in the make file to use these paths. So let's first modify the python path like this. And then let's modify the node path like this. Please note that if you are viewing this video at a later date, the software versions may be different. Therefore, you may need to modify the paths accordingly to match the current version of the software you are using. After making the necessary modifications to the make file, it is important to save the changes before closing the file. To do this, you can simply use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl S. You can now close the make file and the terminal window that was open. Now it's time to compile the Raylib library. To do this, we need to open a new terminal window within the source folder of the Raylib library. To open a new terminal window, right click on your mouse and select Open in Terminal. Now we need to run the following command make dash e platform equals platform underscore web dash b. After running the compilation command, the Raylib library for the web is generated within a few seconds. To verify this, we can navigate to the newly created web folder in the source directory and locate the libraylib.a file. This signifies that we have successfully compiled Raylib for the web platform. Great job!
With this, we have completed two essential steps that need to be done only once. Now, we just have one more step left to export our game to the web. Let's export a C++ game for the web. If your game is written in C, the procedure is exactly the same. I'll show you a minor change it requires in a moment. Let's export the snake game for the web. We open the projects folder and we open a new terminal window. We right click on the mouse and select open in terminal. Now, all we have to do to compile the game for the web is to run this command. You can find the command in the description below. Before running the command, let's explain what is going on here. It looks daunting, isn't it? In simple words, we tell the mscripten compiler that we need to create a web page named snake.html and we provide it with the necessary flags and options to compile the C++ source code main.cpp into a format that can be run in a web browser using WebAssembly. The command includes options to specify the input-output paths, include paths for libraries and preloading of files, among other things. Once the command is run, it will generate several files, including the snake.html file, which can be opened in a web browser to play the game. Here, I need you to understand the following parameters we are providing the compiler. The dash o parameter specifies the output file name or path. The dash std parameter specifies the C or C++ language standard to use. In this case, we use the C++14 standard. The dash dash preload file specifies a file or directory to include in the compiled output and make accessible to the game at runtime. In this case, we are including the graphics and sounds directories. Now, if your game is written in C and not in C++, you can use this argument. Thus, std equals C99, for example. Okay, let's run the command now. If we wait for a few seconds, in the game folder, we are going to see four new files. A file named snake.data, a snake.html, a snake.js, and a snake.wasm. These files are generated by compiling the project for the web. The .html file is the main file that should be opened in a web browser to play the game. And it loads the JavaScript and WASM files which contain the compiled game code. The .data file contains additional data required by the game, in this case the images and the sounds of our game. In order to be able to play the game locally, we need to start an HTTP server. So in the terminal we type python-m-http.server. This command starts a simple HTTP server that serves files from the current directory. Once executed, we can open a web browser and navigate to localhost colon 8000 to view the contents of the directory. Then we click the snake.html file and our game appears in the browser. How cool is that? We can play our game in the browser. To share our game online, we have two options. We can upload the generated files to our own web server, or we can use a hosting service like itch.io to share our game with others. Both of these options allow us to share our game with a wide audience of players. I have uploaded the game to my own web server at pechnidakia.gr slash retrosnake if you would like to try it out. Now let's convert a C game into WebAssembly. I am going to convert a snake game which can be found here. I have placed the source code of the game inside a folder called csnake. The code file is named main.c. Let's convert it to WebAssembly. Again, we open the folder and we right-click and select Open in Terminal. Now we have to enter a command to compile the code using the mscripten compiler. The command is the same as before. We just have to modify three parameters to make it work with this game. The dash o parameter. First, we need to specify the name for the output file. Let's call it snakec.html. The dash std parameter. Now, this game is written in C, so I'll tell the compiler to use the C99 standard. So we type dash std equals C99. 
Lastly, this game does not use any external files, like images or sounds, so we don't need to preload any files, so we delete these two preload arguments, we don't need them. That's it, let's run this command to compile the game. After a few seconds, the compilation is complete, and we are ready to test our game. Again, we have to start an HTTP server with this command, python-mhttp.server. Now we have to open our web browser, navigate to localhost colon 8000 to view the contents of the directory. Then we click the snake-c HTML file and our game appears in the browser. Perfect! Our game works! Now you know how to compile your C or C++ games for the web using mscripten. It is important to note though that the games we compiled today were simple and more complex games may require modifications to work for the web. However, we will cover those modifications in a future video. If you are interested in learning more about building games with C++ and Raylib, be sure to check out my video on how to create the snake game and my video on building the classic Pong game. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time!